Hey there everybody, what's going on? Welcome to my deck tech, my first deck tech for the uh, brand new Demir deck, Rogue's Gallery. We're going to go through here, I'm going to show you the 60 that I'm going to be running for our first couple playtest sessions. Uh, and we're going to try and figure out how to get this uh, get this deck running to where, to where it should be. I like the 60 that I'm running right now. We'll see what you guys think about it. Uh, first of all, we got Team Morph. Um, Expanse is a good card to have in these decks. I like the way that the uh, mana balances out in this one uh, because we got you know 21 lands, uh, 10 and 11. That's pretty good. I don't actually have a problem with that, but I do like having these three just to kind of uh, round it out. Now we're gonna talk to uh, talk about Agony Warp. This is a much maligned card because it's it's definitely not murder. Um, you saw me use it, how we could get a couple of kills early game, so that is why we were running three of them. Um, we've got the three of them in there to try and make sure that we can make it to late game, because this deck is not super strong early on, so Agony Warp, three of them, so that we can have some removal early on. Um, don't be afraid to just use it to take out one guy that's giving you some trouble if you have to do it that way. Uh, it, it's kind of tricky to use correctly to take out two guys, uh, it's kind of tricky to take out one guy with it, but it is removal, we need removal, it's in here. Uh, Demir Guildmage, this guy's good. Um, the discard is undervalued a lot of times, the draw is kind of overvalued, but the fact that both are on this card, they cost four, sure, but having both abilities, very awesome. We have got both of this guy in the deck. Now we got Ink Fathom Infiltrator, unblockable, can't block, but it is unblockable, it's a 2 drop 2 one, both of them are in here as well, like that quite a bit. Mask of Riddles, this thing is sick because it gives your creature fear, don't forget it gives it fear, fear of course means that it can't be blocked by creatures that don't share a color with it, uh, so very awesome, it also lets us draw a card when our creature gets in, so yeah, that's definitely in there. Uh, we got Walking Corpse, this guy is a vanilla, he's Grizzled Dead, uh, he doesn't have a whole lot to do, uh, but he's in here, he's he's okay, you know, 2-2 two, two for 2, what are you gonna do? We got Boring Vampire, it's a 3-2, uh, we've talked about her lack of ass before, but she does do work, she's a, she's a hard worker, so she's in here as well. Demir Cup Purse, this card is awesome, this is amazing, the things people will do not to get hit by this guy, completely insane. Um, this dude's freaking unstable. He is in the deck. We got Naruk Invisimancer. Awesome. Unblockable itself. Gives dudes unblockable. Unblockable buddies? No. Love it. In, in the deck. All the time. Phantom Warrior. Amazing. In the deck. All the time. Now, you will have seen by this point that I took a card out. A lot of people are going to complain about some of the cards that are out of this deck. We'll talk about that more later. Royal Assassin. Removal card in the deck. Uh, Soul Manipulation. Counterspell in the deck. We have to keep cards from getting on the table because we don't have removal for big creatures. He's in there. Uh, Ashling the Extinguisher. This this card... <sighs> when this card goes off, this card is amazing. She's in there because she's a 4-4 four, four for 4 for shit's sake. Um, but she also makes people sacrifice stuff. Um, it's pretty awesome. The targeting's a little lame that it has to target. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's good. It's good. It's, it's a good card. It's in there. We got Baron Spite. Like I said, we need to get rid of stuff. We have to have two creatures out on our opponent's side in order to use it. Okay, there has to be. Uh, so it is a little lame. And it is also target. So we have to be able to target them. So there are double lameness to this. I'm not positive about having both of them in here, but like I've said before, this is double removal. If it doesn't have Hexproof, if it doesn't have Shroud, this is double removal. So two of them in there, that's like four removal spells, you guys. That's amazing. Flight of Fancy, this is Fancy Flight. It's a fancy feast for your cards because they're flying and they're punching people and they're, uh, they're drawn. So uh, we got two of them in there. We're running two of these as well. Helm of the Ghast Lord. That is pretty awesome art, and if for no other reason than it's going to give some of our creatures plus one plus one, it's going to give other creatures plus one plus one, and it's going to give a select few plus two plus two. It's also got the sex on it. It makes your opponent discard. It lets you draw. It's a four drop. That's why there's two of them in there. 
but they are in there indeed. Memory Plunder, this thing, they do, they never see this coming. No one sees this coming. Uh, four mana, and you're just like, hey, hey, you know that card you like? Boom, face. Um, it's hilarious. It is hilarious. And a lot of times I use it as a removal spell, but it's really funny. I mean, corrupt, welcome back, you know, anything. Like, you read the card, it's insane. Instant or sorcery from their graveyard without paying its mana cost. It's a four drop. It does all sorts of crazy things. Um, keep in mind those cards that I said though, those are black mana. So, I mean, we have black mana, but just keep in mind that it's not going to be as powerful as when they used it. So, I feel like I should warn you about that because I specifically brought that up. Um, but yeah, awesome. In there. All day. Sangromancer, amazing, in there, all day. Whenever a creature your opponent controls dies, you get three life. Whenever they discard a card, you get three life. Plus, she's flying, three, three. Yep, she's in there. Look how sexy she is, too. Oh, oh, God, yeah, got her. Oh, unliving psychopath. Oh, God. He's a zombie assassin, which is really, like, the only reason he made the cut is because that is just, I would watch that movie twice a day until I died. That would be awesome. Did anybody watch Ninja Assassin? That wasn't good. Anyway, this guy's in here, he's removal spell early game, and he is pitiful late game. God, he's terrible late game. You don't want to draw this guy when there's some big old fat fatty on the field, because then you're just sad. You're just sad. His eyeballs all flattened around. Anyway, we got Ghast Lord of the Fug. This guy's, this guy's nuts. He's a 5-drop, 4-4, four, four, unblockable. He could say nothing else. He could say absolutely, he could have a little flavor text down there that was like, um, his dress billowed in the wind, and he was looking mighty sexy, that would be fine with me. But he also exiles, doesn't even graveyard him, there's no discard, he exiles cards from your opponent's hand, and he goes off often. Even if they have nothing in their hand, this son of a bitch is unblockable 4-4. Please run him if you play this deck, please, please do it. Oh, man. Jack, this guy is some dead craziness. Uh, Grimjaw over here, he, he's nuts. He's actually nuts because people, people don't really see this guy coming either. Uh, he's a little slow. He's a five drop, but look what he does. Look what he does. He comes in battlefield tapped. Okay, guys, calm down. He comes in battlefield tapped. I know, sad times, but you wake him up. You just feed him a dude. You're like, hey, hey, walking corpse. Just, hey, walking corpse. This is Grimgrin. You two have a lot in common. And then Grimgrin just eats the shit out of the dude. And boom. He's a 6-6. Six, six, and he's ready to block. He's blocking shit all day. Next turn, attacks in, kills another dude. He's a 7-7. Seven, seven. I like it. I love it. I want more of it. Got one of them in there. Uh, Nemesis of Reason. I don't think this should be in here. I kind of have a problem with it. But this son of a bitch is going to mill 10 cards every time he swings. And he's going to swing a lot because he's got 7 in the ass. Um... Does it fit with the rest? There's only one other mill card that they try and give you in this deck. So does it fit in this deck? No. Is it good? Yes. Am I play Like, see, the thing with this deck is I know that a lot of people are going to say a lot of things about cards that I cut out for this playtest. And I would love to hear those in the comments because I do want, you know, like another opinion, a fresh set of eyes on this. I cut out a lot of cards because I felt like they did not fit in this deck. This particular deck. That they were good cards, they were good cards, but they did not make this deck run better. They actually slowed it down to the point where it ran worse. This guy is just such a card, I think. I think this guy actually slows this deck down. He's good, but he slows this deck down. He's in here. We're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens with him. Because uh, he was like the last unlock or the second to last unlock. So I haven't really had a, have a chance to play with him. So we'll see. We'll see. A uh, painful quandary. This card is awesome just because, like, just to be a dick, really. Um, you'll be playing against people, and at first they'll be like, man, I don't care about discarding, unless you got Sangromancer out. That is like a combo of the century right there. But uh, I don't care about discarding, fuck you. But then they get down to, like, one card, and then you play, like, um, Demir Guildmage, and you make them get rid of that card, and they slowly realize that they can't play anything else ever unless they win with it. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's funny against the burn deck because the burn deck just loses card advantage immediately and then just kills itself. Awesome card, it's in there. Ribbons of Night, that's removal. 
does not tell God. It can't even say kills creature. It can't even say destroy target creature. No, no, no. It just deals four damage. So you got to use this in tandem with weird blocks and weird stuff sometimes, but it's a removal spell. You draw a card. Both of them. Both of them in there, and that is it. I know. I know. We're missing some powerhouses. We're missing some cards that you guys are going to be like, but Josh, why? I find that this runs faster. It's just lower to the ground, guys. That's what we'll say. That's what we'll say. Look at the curve. Look at that curve. That curve is sex. That curve is hot sex. Oh, hopefully I'm right about this. I have been getting some pretty sick wins with this build. Um, minus this guy, because I was, like, unlocking. But, uh, I got one or two pretty sick wins with this deck. So, we're gonna check it out. We're gonna see what happens. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys liked the 60. Go on, take it out, take it for a spin. A lot, I mean, there's not too much love for this deck since it was released with, in the same pack as, uh, Mana Mastery. Just give give it a try. Just give it a try. See what you like about it. I actually am really drawn to this deck because I like I like black. I've said that before. I like black white. I like black blue. I like mono black. So I don't know. Maybe I'm trying too hard to like this one, but we'll see what we can do with it in a minute when we get some freaking online wins. I will see you guys there.